Hey, how's it going everyone? MLT Magic Tricks here. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the card tricks David Blaine performed on Jeff Bezos. David Blaine posted the clip of him performing these tricks on his YouTube channel a couple days ago, and I will be leaving the link in the description to that video if you want to check it out. But before we get into this tutorial, if you are new here to the channel, make sure you subscribe with those notifications on for more magic content like this. And also check out the link in the description to my Amazon page where I have a collection of all the decks I use in my videos, along with a variety of magic tricks and accessories. But now guys, let's get straight into this tutorial. Okay, so the first part of David Blaine's routine that he performed on Jeff Bezos was a version of the ambitious card trick. So David started with a shuffle deck, then he had Jeff choose a card. Uh, when you're performing this trick yourself, you can have your spectator choose a card uh, face down or face up. They do have a free selection. So once Jeff took out a card, David had Jeff sign the card, and this gave David a second to get a pinky break below the top card in the deck, uh, because you need to get a pinky break below that top card in order to perform uh, the next move in the trick called the Marlowe Tilt. So uh, David either pushed over, pulled back, got a pinky break that way, or he just came over with his other hand, lifted up on the card, and got a little pinky break just like that. So once uh, Jeff signed the card, everyone's seen the card. David acts like he's pr uh, putting the card in the middle of the deck by lifting up a little bit like this and then pushing out some cards. But in reality, what he's doing is sliding the card right there under the top card in that break to make it uh, seem like he's you know placing it in the middle. But in reality, it's getting into the second position from the top of the deck. So when he finally pushes the card in, you're going to want to, your spectators are going to be in front of you. You push down, get that little shadow like that. It makes it seem like it's going in the middle. You push in quickly and then boom, you've got your card into the second position from the top of the deck. Now at this point, uh, everyone thinks the card's in the middle, uh, then David performs a double lift. He's turning over the top two cards as one, and it makes it seem like that card jumped to the top of the deck, but in reality, it's in the second position just like that. So he keeps the card square. He tells everyone, okay, we're going to uh, take your selection. We're going to turn it over. He's turning over the double packet. He's going to take off the card, the selection but in reality this is a random card he's not going to turn it over obviously he keeps it face down places it in the middle pushes it in and then it makes it seem like the card jumps to the top of the deck so that is the first part of it there and then he's going to do the marlow tilt another time here to get in position to do the next move of this part of the trick so uh, he's going to tell everyone okay we're going to place the card in the middle again he's going to lift up a little bit Make it seem like he's getting it lost in the middle. Insert it right there under the top card. He's going to place it in that break. Pushes it in quickly and then does another double lift. And it makes it seem like the card jumps to the top. Now at this point, he's going to uh, give the cards a little bend. And it makes it seem like the card literally jumps to the top of the deck. Now here is how you're going to do this. So at this point, once you're in position uh, with their card in the second position from the top, you have... Uh, the signed card and then a random card right behind it like this two cards are face up you're going to keep these cards square you're going to lift up the two cards and David he says okay we're going to give the card a little bend so he's really bending two cards here the selection and that random card behind it so you're going to bend the two cards like this tr try to keep them as square as possible obviously you know David's going to do his best to just bend it quickly uh, and then he's going to place the two cards on top of the deck he's going to make sure to hold down that bend he says, okay, we're going to go ahead and slide off your card here. As you can see, we're following that bend. But in reality, guys, the real card is on top of the deck. He's going to use his index finger to hold down that bend so it doesn't flip up accidentally. And then the card he placed right here in the middle, this is a random card. So everyone thinks this is the selection. You can say, okay, we can follow the bend just like that. He's going to square up the deck. He's going to... Uh, grip the pack like this with the thumb on one side three fingers on the other applying pressure inward so that a uh, bend does not reveal itself and then he's going to say watch the card jump to the top you kind of release pressure and at the right angle and make sure you guys if you are performing this you give the cards actually you know a good bend in half so the effect looks better so you you know the cards are kind of like at eye level with your spectator and then you release pressure as you snap and it really makes it seem like the card literally jumps to the top and it just seems really impossible so that is the ambitious card trick that David Blaine performed on Jeff Bezos. And then the last part of it was, you know, the selections here. And then he did a classic force on Jeff to make him take out the card as he was spreading through. So uh, obviously, you know, the classic fork does take a lot of practice. So basically the card's on top here. And then he cut, uh, David Blaine cut the card in the middle. He maintained the break. 
and then obviously as he's spreading through and then he got the timing right so right when Jeff was going to uh, insert you know his hand there to choose a card David Lane kind of you know timed it perfectly so there's one card he can really choose and boom it would be that selection. So obviously David Blaine practices the classic force a lot. That's, you know, a main force he does and he's really good at it. So that's a pretty risky move to do. But, um, you know, obviously David Blaine is a professional. So that was uh, how David uh, Jeff took out the card from the deck. That was his selection. So that is uh, the card trick portion of David Blaine's routine. You know, it's a version of the ambitious card trick that's really cool and actually not too difficult to perform once you practice it. And now, guys, let's talk about the calculator trick. So I'm going to uh, bring out a phone calculator here on the table, and I'll break down how that trick works right now. Okay, so this part of David Blaine's routine that involved the deck of cards and calculator is a trick called Toxic. So it's an easy calculator effect that uh, uses a phone calculator. So this trick works on all Apple products. If you use the iPhone calculator, that works perfectly. And as long as you're using a calculator that doesn't show these series of operations in this top part here, you're good to go. So you Android users out there, you will know if your uh, calculator app works or not. But I know for a fact that it works on all Apple products as long as you're using the Apple calculator. So there is a little setup that you're going to be doing with the calculator. So the phone that David Blaine used for this trick was a pre-set up phone. Uh, you know, maybe one of his assistants handed it to uh, the spectator to hand to David. So just keep in mind that it was a pre-set up phone. And the first thing you're going to do is decide what number uh, you want your prediction to be. So David Blaine chose a six digit number and he used the value cards from the deck to represent that prediction. Uh, so in this case, I just have six uh, random value cards here on top of the deck. And uh, this is going to be my number. So these cards here in order, 658435. Uh, it does not have to be a six digit number, but I recommend using uh, more than five digits. So, you know, like six to nine digits or something like that works perfectly if you're going to use a deck of cards for this trick uh, to represent your number. So the first thing you're going to do is clear the calculator. You're going to Type in your forced number to start, so 658435. And then once you have your forced number typed in, you're going to press plus zero times zero, turn the phone sideways, and then press the open parenthesis uh, button right here in the top left on the Apple calculator. Just like that, you're going to square up the phone, and it makes it seem like you know the calculator is cleared. But in reality, your setup is done and you're ready to perform the trick. So uh, you can have your phone turned off in your pocket. And then when you're ready to bring it out, uh, you just open the calculator app and go to this screen here. And it looks completely clear. The only difference between this setup and a truly clear calculator is this button here, the C button. A really clear uh, cleared calculator would say AC. Uh, but this one does say C since you have some operation typed in. But do not worry. Your spectator will not notice that and you'll be good to go. So... Uh, you can also place your forced cards here on top of the deck and uh, you're ready to start. So David Blaine had uh, a spectator type in a random three-digit number. So it can be any three-digit number. You do not need to see it. Once your spectator types in that, you tell them to press uh, multiply. And then you're going to have the other, uh, David Blaine's other spectator type in another three-digit number. And then he had uh, them press plus. And this number right here, that is a correct number. Those uh, two three-digit numbers we multiply together really is this number and then he had the other spectator type in just a random number he didn't say how many digits it was we couldn't see uh, but in this case you're going to want your spectator just to type in a random six digit number just like this and then whatever number they type in and then when they press equals check this out it goes to your setup number every single time so you can um, add numbers you can multiply numbers subtract them divide them and then when you press equals every single time it will go to your forced number on the screen, which is really cool. It's just how uh, you set up the, the trick at the start is how it works. Now, one quick side note here. So we have uh, that our forced number typed in. I just wanna show you guys something that you want to avoid. Uh, so you have your setup, your spectator types in a three digit number. You have your, you, you can be the same spectator, multiplies it by another one. And then you wanna be careful that this number, uh, when you do your next operation, is going to be less than the final number. So I'll show you what you do want to avoid. So say you have your spectator instead of add a, a six digit number here, you have them multiply it by another three digit plus plus. And then you can obviously see that is a way bigger number than your uh, final number. Then if you had them add one 
and then like subtract one, press equals. It won't really make sense how it goes back to this smaller uh, six digit number in this case. So just be aware of that. If you're using a six digit number, it works best. Multiply two, three digits and then add a random five digit. Um, and then you'll get to your uh, force number there on the end at the end. So I hope that made sense. Just be aware of the size of the numbers that you're uh, having your spectator put in the calculator when multiplying, adding them, subtracting them, or dividing them. But once they press equals, they will get back to this final number. And then obviously David Blaine, he did have the spectator at the start of the trick shuffle up the deck. So David Blaine did one of two things. There was a little cut by the time in the video from when David Blaine picked up the deck that his spectator was handling. So David Blaine either spread through the deck, he got, he located his setup cards and brought them to the top, and then he cut them and then did the classic force to have the guy take out the cards that he needed. But a more logical way, and easier way, is that David Blaine had his setup cards, he had them palmed in his pocket, and then once the spectator was done shuffling, uh, he had them palmed in his hand here, just like this, he brought them to the top, and then he forced his spectator to take out these cards by using a classic force. So that's kind of risky, honestly. Uh, to have your spectator, um, you know, do, do a classic force to have them take out the setup cards. So I would recommend you just tell your spectator, okay, you know, I'm going to shuffle up the deck here. You keep your setup cards on top. We have the random number, and then boom, you show them that the, the, the top cards in the deck are the correct digits that correspond to the number. So that is how David Blaine performed the calculator part. It's called Toxic. It's a really easy effect that you can perform yourself. I uh, just set up the calculator the right way, how, how I explained it in this video, and you'll be good to go. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely give this trick a try if you want. It's, you know, it's a really uh, cool effect incorporating the ambitious card trick uh, with this calculator effect. And uh, it will definitely blow the minds of all your spectators. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you all in my next one. Peace out.